Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, sci-fi, thriller film called, Primer. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It all starts with a voice recorder narration by a man coming from the future. He tells a story of two meticulous, methodical, educated yet ambiguous friends who accidentally discover a scientific breakthrough that is still unknown, or perhaps not yet revealed to man. It begins with an argument among four science engineers who are planning on a side project for an attempt to create a device to counter the effects of gravity. The plan is complicated. All of them work day jobs. They work 50 hours a week with an average salary grade they can depend on. They argue on how much time each should devote, not to mention the funds to proceed with the plan. As the tension grows, they are less likely to come up with a solution. After spending considerable time squabbling, only Abe and Aaron are left determined to take the challenge. Abe, with a cautious and controlling personality, and Aaron, a meddlesome and impulsive kind of guy, begin to plan out their countermeasurements in dealing with the adversities. Despite difficulties, they begin their research and experiment in Aaron's garage. After identifying the necessary components for the project, due to financial inadequacy, they chop off parts from existing appliances and take anything that is needed from their surroundings, thus creating a legitimate particle accelerator device, a device that uses electromagnetic fields to propel charged particles at very high speeds and energies, smashing the charged particles into its subatomic state. The only thing left now is to acquire a palladium element. It is necessary for their main approach to discard the coolant bath for the superconductors because the palladium element can withstand heat up to 2830 degrees Fahrenheit without altering its chemical property and form. Due to this reason, they take the catalytic converter from Abe's car which contains a small amount of palladium necessary for their invention. Then, they take it to a machine shop to fabricate a palladium steel sheet covering. After several weeks of meticulously placing all the parts together, they successfully create the prototype and are finally ready to put the particle accelerator to the test. During the test, they place a nesting egg doll inside the machine, set up the necessary scale, load 0.5 liters of argon to the intake, and switch the device on. At first, the machine seems stable, however, as they increase the electromagnetic field's power, the machine judders irregularly and short circuits. They realize that they blew the batteries. After a failed attempt, they decide to call it a day. The next day, Abe wakes up in a particularly odd manner, seemingly confused about the present time. Aaron calls to meet up with him, still disoriented, Abe answers his call. After a few seconds, Aaron picks him up to bring him back to his garage for a surprise. Inside the garage, Aaron tells Abe that he finally figured out how to stabilize the machine. Aaron installs a regulator to control the intensity of the electromagnetic field as he shows Abe how to operate the machine by gradually feeding power until it reaches its maximum amplitude. As Abe shows his astonishment, Aaron further explains that by the time the machine reaches its equilibrium, it creates enough source of energy to sustain its power on its own just as he pulls out all the batteries. The discovery leads to another scientific dilemma. They discuss each of their hypotheses. After several hours of discourse, both seem unable to agree on a certain conclusion. However, what they both agree on is to keep it to themselves first until further evidence is gathered. In one event, Thomas Granger, father of Abe's girlfriend, shows up as their last best hope of funding. Abe takes the task of quantifying and explaining the device to Granger. As weeks become months, their enthusiasm becomes a slower realization that they are deep in debts. Then one significant and fateful encounter, Abe approaches Aaron who is sitting on a bench at the park, taking notes in his notebook. Aaron is suspiciously wearing an unobtrusive earpiece. He asks Abe about his whereabouts because he wasn't able to reach him all morning. Abe strangely answers that he isn't around. Aaron doesn't seem to mind his suspicious response. Then Abe suddenly gets emotional and starts to talk about their long relationship as a friend. Acting suspicious, he then presented a proposition to Aaron, telling him to follow everything exactly as he says all throughout the day, then in return, he will show him the most important thing that any living organism has ever witnessed. Abe shows Aaron the nesting egg doll, enveloped with protein buildup secreted by an Aspergillus tichor fungus, that he made several experiments with the device. Then he brings Aaron to a biologist to explain how they speed up the buildup processes of proteins in laboratories. The biologist illustrates how they use a centrifuge to spin the fungus around for a couple of thousand rotations in a day as the biologist explains that it takes about a month to finally see a small buildup. Then Abe further explains that the nesting doll that has accumulated the amount of buildup for five days inside their machine, tantamounts to the amount of buildup for six years given normal conditions. 
Seeing Aaron's confusion, Abe decides to bring him back to the garage and shows him the actual experiment instead. First, he sets a mechanical watch at 6 p.m., then he places it in the machine. After six minutes, they take the watch out, and as they calculate, the watch's time advances by 1,347 minutes. Abe does the same experiment for a digital watch, and it shows identical results. Then Abe explains the A to B causal loop side effect. The vertices are where the lines begin and end. The vertices are being represented by line A and line B while inside the device where both lines meet, two or more particles that happen to be at the same point in space at the same time are allowed to go both forward and backward in time. To further explain, if a subject is placed inside line A's active magnetic field, it exits to line B as the magnetic field in line B deactivates. Subsequently, as line B's magnetic field activates, the subject immediately exits to line A as it deactivates its magnetic field, overlapping the present time in line B, thus creating a time machine. Feeling excited about their discovery, they think of registering for copyright and publish their device. However, Aaron thinks of a better plan but it needs a bigger model that could fit a person in. His plan is to determine the flow of the stock market in the present time and use the invention to go back in the past, invest in winning stocks, and earn big in the stock market as they converge back into their own timeline. Indulged by the idea, Abe begins to refine his proof of concept as he builds a larger model for the both of them as they address each issue they could possibly encounter during the time warp. After days of modification, they finally move their base operation into a self-storage unit. After checking all the preparations ready, they begin their first attempt. After traveling six hours into the past, though the attempt was successful, they sit to contemplate on their experience. Then they devise an intricate plan for their big break as Abe explains the proceedings. On the day, they first secure both of their cars, one at the facility for their doubles to use, and the other, parked outside from their doubles line of sight for them, the originals, to use when they return. They then step inside the device and travel another six hours into the past. As they get themselves into the warp, they set their timers to determine the exact time for them to intervene. They stay isolated in a hotel for a few hours, so as not to interact or interfere with the outside world while their doubles are doing their usual routine. As the time finally arrives, they start buying stocks from the highest margin and are able to succeed on their first day. Then Abe and Aaron repeat the six-hour time warp multiple times over multiple days, earning big profits in stock trades with the help of their future foresight of the market's performance. After multiple attempts, the time travel is already taxing on Abe and Aaron's bodies, as the two of them begin to notice alarming side effects that take the form of progressive worsening of penmanship and ear bleeding. Then one day, as a result of their inability to cope with the power of the technological advancement they have in hand, they question each other about the odds of their sense of morality. The idea has been spoken, and the words wouldn't go back after they utter it aloud. Realizing that there is no real need for it and no possible real-world application, they confirm that there is no real advantage to gain from it, so the idea of immorality stays, breaking down Abe and Aaron's close relationship. As days pass, their suspicions grow against each other, whether or not one of them might have leaked their biggest secret to someone. The tension between the two men comes to a head when Abe decides to pick a losing investment in the stock market without Aaron's knowledge. Abe explains that they need to fail to avoid suspicions, but Aaron is seemingly overly frustrated to understand Abe's better judgment. Later that night, their dispute is reinforced after an encounter with Thomas Granger, who appears inexplicably two to three days unshaven that is in overlap with his original self. Aaron then tells Abe that he saw Granger earlier in the day, clean-shaven, getting ready to attend a function with his wife. Aaron theorizes that, at some unknown point in the future, Granger entered the device with timeline-altering consequences. The permutations are endless. From this, they deduce that the problem is recursive, but beyond that, they find themselves admitting, defying against the course of nature. Guilty of the alterations of the events, Abe goes to the storage room, but somehow advances two more rooms from where their time machine is stored and opens another storage room containing another device that he calls the failsafe device. Then he travels into the past, going back four days before the invention of their time-traveling machine. Cumulative competing interference wreaks havoc upon the timeline. Future Abe sedates original Abe so he will never conduct the initial time-travel experiment. Then future Abe goes back to where he approaches original Aaron who is sitting on a bench at the park as he takes notes in his notebook. This time, he intends to dissuade original Aaron, but instead, he finds future Aaron who has arrived in the scene first, listening to the pre-recordings of their past conversations on his unobtrusive earpiece. As future Aaron expresses his intent to stop him about his plans to sabotage the first creation of the time travel device, future Abe faints at his revelation, overcome by shock and fatigue. 
Future Abe wakes up. The two men briefly and tentatively reconcile while they jointly travel back in time, experiencing and reshaping an event where Abe's girlfriend Rachel Garner was nearly killed by a gun-wielding party crasher. After many repetitions, now ever sufficient with knowledge of the party's events, Aaron stops the gunman and becomes a local hero. After the successful alteration, Aaron considers a new life in foreign countries where he can tamper more broadly on the timelines for personal gain, while Abe states his intent to remain in town and try to sabotage their original experiment, Abe and Aaron ultimately part ways. As future Abe watches over original Abe, going to painstaking extremes to keep him unaware of the future, future Aaron on the other hand shares his knowledge with original Aaron by telling the story of two meticulous, methodical, educated yet ambiguous friends who accidentally discover a scientific breakthrough that is still unknown, or perhaps not yet revealed to man, on a voice recorder. In conclusion, as both Abe and Aaron are scientifically accomplished engineers, they are equally morally and ethically a failure as man. When humanity's greed takes over, even by benefiting the greatest gift one can receive, they nonetheless become blindsided by it. Thinking only for one's personal gain, neglecting the morality of altering one's former self. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.